is only the offensive MVP of the year. And the fans are screaming for Montana. <laughs> Can incredible. you believe that? Is that incredible? I can't believe it. The, it it's got to affect Steve Young. I wonder about it. I mean, that talk about gratitude. The guy has been great. 14-2. and two. He's had a better year than Montana ever had, except yeah. for one. And they're saying, where's Montana? <laughs> Woman calls a talk show and says, I hope he breaks his leg so that Joe can play. Isn't that amazing? Can you believe that? Now, also, instead of Roger Craig, you have Ricky Waters. Right. Who's terrific. There is no Ronnie Lott. But again, the key is, and it's interesting, all year the Redskins have had one problem. They can't score once they get to the other team's 20-yard line. And in that game two years ago, that's exactly what happened. Yep. Three times inside the 20, they came away with nothing. I think it's a situation where uh, opposing defenses have said, if you can rush Mark Rippon, if you can make him react a little too quickly, uh, he'll make mistakes. Huh. I think uh, inside the 20-yard line is a very difficult place to score, but that's no excuse how the teams do it. Here's oh. a statistic we came up with you'll yeah. find interesting. John Canoza, who does the statistics on, on the Redskins broadcast, looked back over the entire year. On first and second down. Which the Redskins never pass on. Never pass on. 81% of the time they run. On first and second down. Yeah. Inside the 20, Mark Rippon hits 16% of his passes. He's 5 for 31. That's wow. why they run 81% of the time. Why? Why, you say? I have no idea, and I think that... Uh, this may be one of those things that you throw out, you know, when you get to the playoffs, because last week I don't think anybody expected them to play with the intensity and the skill that they played with last week against the Vikings. Goodness gracious. Well, that's a good reason why not to pass the I ball. Think but still, I think it's mental. But still, mental. Frank, if we know, you know, I know, the fans in the city know that the Redskins are not going to pass on first down and maybe not on second down inside the opponent's 20, well, then every defensive coordinator in the league knows it, too. Never underestimate the stupidity of the defensive coordinator playing against the Redskins. They have consistently oh, okay. done stupid things over the years that we broadcast those games. All right. And speaking about defensive coordinators, before we uh, bring out our guests, what about Richie Pettibone? Well, Richie Pettibone, is, uh, I think, the, probably is the number one contender right now for that Bears job. Yeah. They can't talk to him until the Redskins are done in the playoffs. If Richie wants the job, he's going to have to campaign for it. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to convince the Chicago ownership that I can put together the staff. But here's something else to think about. New collective bargaining agreement is in, in effect now. It's, it's going right. to take place. How about if Richie Pettibone not only convinces the Bears management that he can bring in the staff, but he says, hey, 26 Redskins are free agents now. How about if I recruit eight or nine of them to come along with me? Wow. You think that'd help him get the job? <laughs> how about, hey, I'll, get, I'll bring Wilbur Marshall back to the Bears. Wow. Something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, does his heart bleed burgundy and gold? I don't. You know what? I hope he doesn't go. I think he was worth at least himself four games this year. I counted I, six. Six? I think it, I think in I other could, words, instead of nine and seven, there would have been uh, three and thirteen. I think that there were six games where the defense wow. was the difference. Isn't that something? All right. He's All right. Addition. We'll be back just a minute. Two terrific guests from last week. You couldn't do better. See you in a minute. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you listening to me? Honey, you will never be in this position you again. You gotta start saving. These are the times to plan you ahead. Two people earning start good salaries. Thinking salaries. about tomorrow. Need a little security. When I was your age, are you listening? I didn't think I'd be my age. I had two jobs. How do you think we bought this house? Two jobs. You like to have a good time. Never do with you. But you gotta think about the future. I love you. There's only one way I know how to drive. Straight. If you've been drinking, pick someone else to do the driving. A message from Budweiser. Road noise has to go through a lot to get into the cabin of the Lexus ES300. 
That's why it rarely makes the trip. Hey, I understand. You know me. I'm the same as you. I know, I know, I know. We can't just stop spending. We've got to pay our bills. But at the same time, we have to save. That's why they invented START, just for people like us. You know, every time I use START, a little bit of what I spend goes into a long-term savings account. So before I know it, I'm saving. It's a great idea. Welcome back to our show. There are a lot of heroes in last week's playoff victory over the Minnesota Vikings. Two of our guests tonight, though, had exceptional games. Would you please join me in welcoming defensive end Fred Stokes, who had three sacks, and running back, kick returner, quarterback, and anything else you want, Brian Mitchell. Hey! Hey, Fred. How are you doing? How are you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Brian. Welcome, sir. Right there. He's looking in the last time, isn't he? He's telling yeah. me a little. Yeah. Yeah. Is that? Is that? Okay. Well, Brian, you ran back a punt. You uh, faked the punt, ran 38 yards. You uh, ran for a touchdown. Is it true that you're going to play quarterback today? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's not true. Little but single if wing, you stand back there. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if they wanted you to, you would. I would. I won't turn them down. Now, hey, look. Now, you're no secret anymore. You're out of the box. I mean, the 49ers, they don't say, who's Brian Mitchell? Hey, man, that's what they're seeing the whole week, Brian Mitchell. I mean, you're no secret anymore. Well, they don't know what I'm going to do when I'm back there, so I still uh, have a couple of secrets. <laughs> that's true. I mean, the one thing I've been waiting for all year long was for a, a little pitch to you and an option pass. You haven't yeah. even tried that yet. Mm. Ernest has been doing that. He's been doing a good job, so I guess they just left that to him. He was three for three with three touchdowns, so... It's hard to take him out of there for that. Fred, they only gave you three sacks. Yeah, that's We right. gave you four. Well, maybe I should be working with you then. <laughs> <laughs> Makes a little bit, don't you, you, get a, you have an incentive clause, don't you, uh, No, basically, once, when, once you get to the playoffs, all of the incentive stuff is for your personal contract uh, ends. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it, that's why guys play so hard. It's a team effort, you know, once you get to the playoffs. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. The, the, all those incentives are gone, and it's, yeah. you play for the glory of $6,000. All that stuff Brian right. did, it. But, but you get, uh, now what is it, you get 6000 just to make the playoffs, then you get, what, another 10000 for man yeah. for winning the first mm -hmm. playoff, then you get something, uh, what is it? 18. 18, 18 and then yeah, so, I mean, that's, 18. that's pretty good incentive. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people take it pay cuts. That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you a story. Well, I'm taking a pay increase. <laughs> 1978, Redskins go to the Super Bowl, they fly out on the charter. To get off the charter, the stewardess runs out. The buses are gone. She said, Dexter Manley left his playbook. She said, this is serious. I said, well, give it to me. I'm going back to the hotel. Oh, I, don't, I said, it's okay. So I won't look at it. So we're riding back in the car, and I'm going, oh, I got to look. <laughs> I open it up. There's one page, and it's all the money he makes for the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> that was an incentive That book. was the game plan, <laughs> the money. <laughs> That's not bad. Fred, let me, let's take a look at... Uh, Three sacks and two in a row. Let's go to the videotape. Fourth quarter, and this is a rarity. You r rarely see the same defensive lineman make two sacks on consecutive plays. There was a first one, and then boom. Next play, same thing. A sack on the Salisbury. Uh, right? That's yeah. it. Do you do you think subconsciously on third down, uh, a defensive lineman like yourself? tries harder than first down or second down um i don't know about try harder but you know that you know this is the this is the so i guess it's a money down money so to down. speak you know you get a chance to get in get the quarterback or you make a big play and you get out of there mm -hmm. um if not then you know you you got to go three more downs before you they're not going to let you off the field after the first down <laughs> you know so the third down it doesn't mean a lot you know you want to just get out of the game put the offense back on the field now you don't think we're going to let you go here without looking at your three plays i mean right <laughs> <laughs> Do you think no he way. minds? Look at that smile. All right. Here we go. All talk about all purpose back. 209 yards total, everything. First of all, uh, here's the 54 yard punt return. Did you think you were going to go all the way on this? Yeah. When I cut back right there, I think I gave him a chance. I didn't really see 86. If I'd have seen him, I probably would have cut all the way across the field. <laughs> <laughs> and now, the fake punt. 
Now, what's the deal on that? Do you, is that, do you have an option? I, I assume they call that from the bench, right? Yeah, they do, yeah. but I have the option to call it off, and they were in the uh, exact formation that we wanted, and uh, they were on the field. They were all yelling, you know, watch the fake, watch the fake, and you I, was, I was thinking to myself, yeah, you better watch if you're not in the right defense. We're going to run it. <laughs> 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 and we just ran it, and uh, wow. it was successful. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> and, you know, I talked about, in the introductions, I talked yeah. about heroes. All right, to make that 38-yard run work, you had to have two guys that blocked like hogs. I say that because one was Monty Coleman, a linebacker, and the other was Todd Bowles, a free safety, yeah, and who all, came up with two blocks. Yeah, they, they, made, they did a good job of shielding the guys to the inside. Matt Elliott, he really uh, sprayed me when uh, he came out and kicked the guy out, and that opened the hole up. So those three guys, they deserve most of the credit for that play, because without them, I probably would never got a yard. Yeah. All right, now what about the touchdown? Uh, this is, uh, here we go, first down on the eight. It was like, well, look, you earned it. You set it up, so let's give it to him again. Well, you know, I have never run a touchdown in the NFL from the running back position, and when I got out, the play was designed for me to start to the right and go all the way back side, but they had already cut all of that off, and number 57, he was looking to the left side, well, to my left. I just started straight up the field, and when he hit me, I just kept pumping my legs, pumping my legs, and the closer I got to the touchdown, it was like, hey, nobody's not going to stop me because <laughs> you want to score a touchdown, and I have never scored a touchdown in the playoff either way, and, hey, that was my first, and I was <laughs> real proud. Oh, that was great. Fred, uh, you're going against a left-handed quarterback today in Steve Young. So I presume when he has a tendency to float back there, he's going to float to his left side of the field. Mm -hmm. Does that change the way you rush the passer? Not really. Um, you know, we're just getting back there, you know, trying to... Uh, the thing that would change it is his ability to run. Um, that in itself would probably change our whole game plan. Um, put him in the same uh, category as Randall Cunningham. He, he's... Uh, but unlike Randall Cunningham, he doesn't mess around. If it's no. not open, he goes, no. right? He goes, right, and, he, and he's good. He's not looking to slide. He's looking to to uh, get as many yards as he can back there. So I figure Richie Pettibone's going to come up with something interesting on defense to kind of negate that somehow. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about these charges, Fred, of, uh, they say uh, uh, that the 49ers notorious for cutback block and uh, a reverse body block uh, where different techniques that may, maybe it's legal, but it borders on, uh, hey, that could be a cheap shot, but it's not... Uh, I think that's just the, the way that they've been taught, you know, that's just in their scheme of blocking, um, you know, everybody do things differently, and uh, that's just one of the ways they, they, they try to get the job done. Um, some teams, you know, do a lot of scoop blocking, other teams try to power and knock, your ball, knock you off the ball as the Redskins, but that's just something that they do. Okay. So you don't think that, you wouldn't say they're... Uh... No, nah, I, I mean, it's Especially part, before the uh, game. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're not trying to intentionally hurt a guy, then, you know, okay. get the block the best way you can. There are some t some coaches and some teams that'll, that that believe the cut block is more yeah. effective. Yeah. That if yeah. you get a guy down, he's yeah. not going to hurt you. I mean, as long as you're not hurt, you know, trying to intentionally put a guy out the game, then it's yeah. fine. God knows if you go at their, at their knees, they're going to fall or try to fall to get out your way anyway. Yeah. So that's probably the most effective block. We okay. got a break. When right. we come back, we'll have a chance for audience to ask questions. I got a couple more I got to ask Great. you too. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Okay. country music, there's a lot of songs about drinking and a lot of songs about driving. And there's not a thing wrong with singing them both in the same show. But if you've been drinking, don't take your show on the road. Please don't drink and drive. Know when to say when. A reminder from your friends at Bud Light and the Maryland Department of Transportation.
It's the way we make you feel that makes people fly British Airways. The world's favorite airline. Until now, some thought imported luxury sedans possessed a higher level of engineering. But change is on the horizon. Introducing the 1993 Cadillac Seville STS with the North Star system. At its heart, a 295 horsepower North Star V8, so advanced, its first scheduled tune-up is 100,000 miles. The Seville STS at the Cadillac Association of Greater Washington, changing the way you think about American automobiles. Are you ready for the hottest, the sexiest sex symbol of 1993? On the next Montel Williams Show. Monday at 9 on Channel 9. Do the Monday night then with Tammy Wynette, Dan Rather, and Meshack Taylor. Only on the next Arsenio. Monday after Eyewitness News on Channel 9. Guest transportation provided by private sedans. For quality sedan and limousine transportation, call 301-460-7644. Now, Fred, before coming over here the last four years with the Skins, you played the first two years with the Rams. Yes. Which means you played the 49ers twice every year. So uh, they're no strangers to you, and that Candlestick Park is no strange place for you. No, but it's not a, a very friendly place. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, don't, I can't remember uh, actually winning a game over yeah. there. And I've, I've played in there probably four or five times, yeah. but I can't, you know, remember winning in there. How do you wow. feel? How, it's supposed to rain all day out there today. How but do you it feel? It seems like it's always wet in, in that stadium. <laughs> how, how, are you a mudder? Yeah. Yeah. You're not, <laughs> you're not a I'm father, from Louisiana. Right? It rains yeah. all the time. You play in a tornado, right? <laughs> I want to give credit to Mike Ive. He's a teacher at Mark Twain over in Fairfax. He brings up an interesting point. Super Bowl seven, Washington and Miami played in Los Angeles. Super Bowl 17, Washington, Miami played in Los Angeles. Super Bowl 27, Washington, Washington and Miami, Miami huh? Good. I take that. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's in the numbers. Hey, Simple as that. How about, but wouldn't it be uh, more interesting if it was Stan Humphreys against Mark Griffin oh. in the Super Bowl? <laughs> oh, he's asking for a lot. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be great? Yeah, that's a stretch. That'd, That'd be a great, great, great story, yeah. wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Stan is our friend, but we wouldn't like him much that day. <laughs> so afraid to, afraid to get acquainted with him. <laughs> just let him know how much I miss him. Is, is that right? Just, just a little, a little Give him a couple of bear hugs, yeah. you know. Yeah. Stuff like hey, that. Uh, let me ask you something. Is this true that you didn't play uh, high school football till your, till your senior year and you, you were in the marching band? Mm -hmm. uh, that's something I talk to kids about because, you know, it's interesting that kids try so hard when, they li when they're little to try to make a decision on what they want to do. And I just tell them to take their time and just grow. And, uh, you know, eventually you're going to figure out what you want to do. They're well, a race. Yeah, well, yeah well, did exactly. The, did the coach see you uh, say, well, that guy's big enough to blow the tuba and march with it? He, he's big enough to play football? Yeah, because I had, I had a great, I say a great career as a child coming up. I was a running back. Um, I, was a kick, I kicked the ball off and was the only guy that could kick it into the end zone. Um, so, I, I mean, I, had, I was well known as far as playing football. And then when I stopped, everybody was still looking for me. You know, saying, where is this guy that we saw as a kid growing oh, up? Oh, yeah. cool. That's interesting. Yeah. So there it is, folks. Uh, oh, teach your kids to play the tuba. <laughs> that's it. You know, early year. <laughs> Very well-rounded. Kind of right. Guy, you know. huh. Brian, Do you still uh, play the tuba, by the way? I haven't played it in years. Oh, okay. Joe Gibbs said this week, we've got to get Brian Mitchell more involved. We've got to use him now. It's been my mistake. We haven't used him in the past. If you could dictate how much you were used and in what situations, what would you tell Joe Gibbs? Well, would I tell him? Yeah. Put me in the game all the whole game. But not nah, really. I would just like to be in the game, I guess. I, I would like to get about 16 to 20 carries, if possible. Or, you know, t I'll take 10 a game. I think that, you know, 10 carries a game, you know, to change up the pace some. They'll get used to Ernest or Ricky, and then you put them in the game. And I think I'll, you know, I'll be able to do different, because we have different styles of running, you know. And uh, they'll get used to Ernest's style, and then I'll come in the game. And I'm re I like to hit the holes quickly and run away from people. And if they... In the hole, I try to run open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the audience right now, and uh, here's Frank Herzog. All right. right, and here's Jerry Pitts from Fairfax, Virginia. Jerry, what's your question? Uh, this is more to Brian, I guess. Um, in the second half of Saturday's game, the offense, specifically the offensive line, dominated the Vikings line. Um, I was wondering if the Redskins, if they found a weakness at halftime in the Vikings line that you took advantage of, or do you think the Vikings were just tired? Well, I, 
at the begin or at the beginning of the game, Coach Gibbs always said we have to control the line of scrimmage, and their linemen wasn't that big. They were real quick, so we decided instead of running away from them, run directly at them, and our linemen were doing a great job. They were like they were double teaming the guy on the line to the linebacker, and hey, they were driving them five yards off the ball. So my the carry the yards that I got were very easy. This is James E. Brown, not James Brown, James E. Brown. <laughs> James E. Brown taught James Brown everything he knows. Now, what's your right. question? I'd like to know, uh, are you going to put a spy on Young when y'all play the 49ers, like keeping him inside the pocket and still letting him out right or left? You know, maybe the linebacker or whoever. I think maybe Marshall may be best at that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. We're, we're going to try to do everything we can to keep that guy from running, running up and down the field. <laughs> Give that game plan away. <laughs> <laughs> Laverne Coleman from District Heights. What's your question? Hi, Brian. You rushed for over 200 plus yards last week. Um, that, now that was combined, everything. Everything. Yeah. Right. Uh, do you think was was that a playoff record that you set? Mm, no, nah, it wasn't a playoff record. It was number three on the Redskins list. Uh, right. When I was doing it, when I was out there, I was having fun. I wasn't really thinking about a record, but you know. Hey, if I can go this week and get 250, if the team wins, that's all I really care about. Mm -hmm. Deepak Bhatia from Silver Spring. What's your question? This is for Brian once again. Sorry, Fred. Uh, <laughs> do you expect many more stunt plays this weekend? You mean fake plays? Fake plays, fake well, punts. Well, to be honest with you, this is the playoff. You just do or die, and I'm not going to say we're going to run them today or not, but <laughs> <laughs> if it's needed, we have enough of them. I got it. Right. Yeah, they got to be looking for that. I, I would be amazed. Uh, if I'm the 49ers, after seeing what you did last week, I would say, in all fairness to you, there's no way you're going to fake a punt again. <laughs> hey, we, there are more than one way to fake. It's like it's one, more than one way to skin a cake. Oh. There's more than one way to uh, How about a fake, a fake field goal? How about when we come back, we get to Stump Warner? Would you like to Stump Warner? <laughs> I think you can okay. do it, too. You got, you got Stump Warner all over you. <laughs> Guests on Redskins sidelines receive a gift from Stephen Windsor, featuring tall, big, and short sizes, including 365 suits and country club blazers by John White's for Palm Beach. It's only natural that children look to their parents for answers. So to help you explain why some things that may be fine for adults aren't right for children, Anheuser-Busch offers family talk. Free advice from professionals to use with your kids while they're still learning to be grown up. And their favorite teacher is you. Let's stop underage drinking before it starts. British Airways, the world's favorite airline. When you move into a new house, little things are going to come up. Unexpected things. <laughs> things the previous owner forgot to mention. So to make your new house a home, turn to the book with more choices. It can even help if you want to get out of the house for a while. The genuine C and telephone yellow pages. Nine out of ten use it. Nor the book and match it. A better panting company. Steal away, steal away. Steal the drama of a nation away, unfolds away, on stage. The words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh the music of the movement. The voices of the struggle. Ain't got long to stay here. The dramatic musical presentation of the life and times of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. One week only, January 12th to 17th at the Warner Theater. Call 202-432-SEAT. That's 202-432-SEAT. It's do or die for the Skins. They've got to stop San Francisco. And assistant GM Bobby Mitchell is going to tell you how. Plus, James Brown's got an inside look at the 49ers. Countdown to kick off at a special time, Saturday at 3 on Channel 9. All right, you're always giving me the stumper. I've got a stumper for the audience. Who was the Redskins' first pick in 1973, running back from Maryland State, and now owns and runs his own limousine service? Anybody know? 
He's right here, Moses Denson. Hey. <laughs> How you doing? Huh? Moses played under uh, the George Allen years. Yeah, I was uh, Georgia's first draft pick. Of course, that was in the eighth round of that year. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Moses, nice to see you again. Okay, all right. Who's uh, who's got a question? Yes, ma'am. Um, know from you, what team did Otto Graham coach after he coached the Redskins? Oh, uh, when I want to not. Oh, it's the uh, Coast Guard Academy. How come not, how come they only clap when the audience starts to help us? Who else had a question? Yeah, go ahead. The Redskins have had three 99-yard TD pass plays. Yeah. Who were the quarterbacks and the receivers? Well, Sonny Jurgensen to uh, Gerald Allen. That's right. And uh, George Izo to, who did Izo throw? I can't remember who Izo threw to. Bobby Mitchell. Oh, Bobby Mitchell. Should have known that. <laughs> There's another one? Oh, Andy Farkas to Phil Chuck. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, who got it? Look at this. Wait a minute. Twins. Twins. Right? Who's the oldest? Not me. Me. Huh? me. Well, I'll, I'll get the questions in, okay? okay. How many season tickets did the Redskins sell in their first year here? You mean 1937? When they moved from Boston? I bet you they didn't have season tickets. Huh? Okay. 16. 958. Okay, that's great. We got it. Yeah. Two Redskins have won NFC Rookie of the Year honors. Who were they and what year? I don't remember. Charlie Taylor in 64 and Mike Thomas in 75. Great. Hey, listen. We want to thank uh, Fred Stokes and uh, Mr. Mitchell because especially they got to get out of here. The game starts in one hour, right? <laughs> and don't forget Frank Herzog and Sam Huff coming up on Countdown to Kickoff. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, folks. <laughs>